Hi, welcome to this week's episode of the Game Design at Home course. Um, this week we're looking at pen, paper, cards and dice games. Uh, so the video this week is going to be a little bit different because um, we're working on things that we can do kind of not using the computer. So one of the ways we're thinking about games, and this is going to be kind of throughout this course, is if we think about um, two parts of it. So games are made up of rules on the one hand and storytelling on the other. So you can think about it in terms of the rules for building systems that make spaces for the storytelling. And the other side of that is that storytelling makes us invested in following and playing within the rules of the space. So if we think about what we were doing last week, uh, with the rules building these systems. So with Bitsy, those rules would be things like having a key that you need to pick up to open a door. And then the storytelling side of that with Bitsy would be those elements of conversation that you put in so the characters can uh, interact with the player and kind of start to tell a story about why the player is in that space and what's happening. What we're going to do today is focus slightly more at first on the idea of thinking of these rule systems and how they in turn then begin to build this storytelling space. So at home you've probably got stuff that you can use to explore these these kind of rules. Yeah so the example we're going to use first is you know and you could try this kind of with, with any um, simple game you've got at home if you have like top trumps cards it'd be great to do um, but also kind of we could you could really do it with any board games as well and so first of all if you think about what the rules are that make up this game so with Uno if you haven't played it before um, it's usually two or more players you get given set of cards and the aim is to get rid of them first and you do that um, by placing down cards that match so there'll be one card in the middle and on top of this card I can place a yellow card so there's four this could go on here or I can place a seven of a different color. So the screen seven that would be fine. Or I could use one of the power up cards of the same color. So we have cards like this, that means the next player misses the go. You have cards this that means the player changes direction then we've got powerful cards like this that can be placed on top of any card that means the other player has to pick up four cards so another part is <clears throat> taking in turns and another rule is that as you go through when you get down to your last card on that turn you need to say who knows so that other people they know that you've got your last card and you might win the next turn so have to do something to try and stop that. Um, I mean, it's one of these games where there's already kind of these extra rules or kind of side rules that are kind of optional. You're not really sure if they're the real rules. And kind of if you play with other friends, they're probably going to think different things about the rules. Uh, one of those is chaining. So if you put down a card, like they pick up two cards. One of the ones that people play with is that you can put another one on top. That means you don't have to pick up two, and the next person will have to pick up four. You can keep going. But that's kind of a rule that is going to be different depending on how people have played the game before. Um, another rule that they have is this seven and zero rule. So this means that if you play a seven, you can swap your entire hand with someone else. So 
so you can tell another player that you want to swap your cards in your hand with what they've got. If you place a player zero, it means that every player has to move their hand one along. So you, you give cards in your hand to the person next to you, and so on around. So Uno is one of these, these games where there are already these kind of rules on the edge. But what about if you if you start thinking about a way of changing it? So it's it's a two-player game, but is there a way you could change the rules so that it's it's kind of fun to play as one player? You know, what changes would you have to make? Instead of putting cards down, could you come up with some rules where you have to pick up cards or get a certain type of card? Could you make the goal to just have all the other cards? So. Yeah, maybe you can pause the video here, and if you if you've got some Uno cards with you, try and um, have a couple of games. Try and see if you can come up with any rules that you can add to make it interesting to play, kind of as as one player. Great. So now we'll look at the pen and paper systems. These are a really great form of games to explore when you're learning about building games, because they kind of teach you about the different elements of a game that you need to put it all together. So you may not be having to code everything at the moment, uh, but it can give you the building blocks you need to think about. Uh, so if we think of some examples, I'm sure you've all played Knots and Crosses before. Um, <clears throat> so think about how Knots and Crosses works. You're drawing a basic grid, and then there are really simple rules about what you can place within that grid. As an example, here's a version of a game that feels very similar to Knots and Crosses, but you might not have played before. So this is a game called Sim. So we draw a simple hexagon of points. And now, on each player's turn, like with Knots and Crosses, you have the chance to draw a line. And the idea is to keep drawing lines that connect points so my straight line is player one, my ruler line is player two. And you can draw lines between the points until someone makes a triangle between the two lines. So the game is quite simple, but quickly we'll find someone who can't go and we have a winner. So now the only place left for this player to go is here. So doing this makes a line into there. So this has formed the triangle. Okay, now the interesting thing about this is that this system at the moment is only using kind of rules. There isn't anything around it. But what if you think about the game Battleship? Now you might have played Battleship using the like the sort of plastic sets and the, the pegs on the board. But it's also a really simple game to play just on paper. <clears throat> so what you can do is each player can have their own piece of paper and you can draw two grids. So when you have your two grids you can say this one is going to be mine. This one can be the other player. So on yours, instead of placing plastic ships, you just draw your ships. So we've got one there, we've got one here. So we say A, C, D. And so you just start playing this in the same way you normally would. So you say uh, target B2, and it'll tell you if it was a hit or a miss. So you say miss or hit. And then they're going to say the place they choose, they say D2, it's a miss, and so on. And so you can see you're quickly playing this game. Again, it's like Knots and Crosses or uh, the Sim, the Hexagon one. But suddenly there's, there are other things happening around it. There's a, a story going on. or there's a scene, there's something more than the rules themselves, you're having to imagine something else. So another good example 
that I really like is Racetrack. Racetrack is a game that you can play on, you can draw a grid, or you can get some squared paper, makes it a bit easier. And the idea is that you're imagining each player is controlling a car. And what's really great about this one is that you're kind of making these decisions. You can you can draw a track that the players can move around. Um, and the way you move through this space is, is kind of quite simple rules, but it gives the appearance of kind of driving a car. So racetrack, as I said, it's kind of easy to use square paper, but if you if you need some story on grid, you can, that's fine. So usually you'd have a starting line and some kind of track. So let's say the track is this line down here, or the, the edge of the track. So the player can't go in any of these squares. Let's say have a and the player's going to start here at this point. So from this point, the player can move to any of these one squares around it. So here, 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 here. We're just going to move to here. Now on your second turn, you have to move the same space again. So this is one here. And from there, you can again make the same decision to move there the one you're starting on, this one down, there, there. So this point here is called the principal point. This is the point that has to be moved to. But then you can move to any of these eight points around that as well. So as we try to do a race, we'll move to this one. Okay, so now you can see that from that turn we moved to, so our next point that we have to go to is there. But then from there we can move to any of these eight points around it again. You can see there's a bit of a turn coming up. So we probably want to turn at least to here. But let's see what happens if we move here. So already we can see this is our line. We're going quite fast. I'm not sure if we're going to make it around this corner. Let's work it out. So we're moving down one, across three, down one, across three. We move at least to there. We can move to this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. Obviously, these ones are going to be off the track, so we don't want to move there at all. And it looks like we're definitely going to be heading off the track because if we move to this one, we move to there, we can see our next point is going to have to be at least there. So it would include that. So we might make it. Let's see if we can do that. So we move to... Um, to there. Yeah. Our next point is there. We've gone to there and so on. So we have just made it, but obviously that was quite slow. If we were in a race playing against someone else, they probably would have been able to do that quicker. So race track is a really great one to um, mess around with because you can start drawing different tracks, you can do different things, and yeah, come up with your own special rules as well. So cards. Let's think about. A deck of cards. So if you can get hold of a deck of cards, um, think about cards and dice. We can start to allow other things to happen and kind of we can use them to generate random things that will shape the way our story unfolds. A good example of this is a game called Scoundrel. I'm going to put the links for these at the end. So this this is a game where you use the deck of cards to start um, building a dungeon or a map for the players to move through. So in each turn, you draw four cards, and they each mean different things. So these heart cards, these are like health potions that you can pick up in the room. The six and the five here are diamonds. 
these you can use as weapons and then the other cards these are all monsters that you have to fight with in the room and you kind of the idea is that you go through the deck and each time you draw these four cards they're a different room and a different thing is happening and you have to make decisions based on what comes up randomly you have to decide um, kind of whether you're going to take that potion or whether you're going to save it for later whether you're going to pick up that weapon or leave it for later so that's a really great one to think about um, but again just if you if you can have the cards kind of start thinking about ways you can you can just make up rules and systems of, of putting these things together so yeah we, i was trying to think about um something we could we could use as an example and so i thought about this game called climbing so let's say we have two piles of cards so i'll put them down and then in our hand we'll have we'll have like a certain number of cards so so we've got four i'm going to treat these as our supplies each turn we have We'll put a card in the middle. The idea is to climb to the top of this mountain by successfully. Let's say that as we do this, if we get a match like this, we've made a base camp. So when something goes wrong, yeah, we'll just come back to there. So that's good. Okay. Oh. So that's another camp. So we've got this idea about base camps, but there's nothing really, I'm not sure what else is going on. So what about if as we're climbing, we have to say whether the next card's going to be higher or lower. So let's put this this way to show that's where the camp is. So let's say lower. It's a bit tricky. Let's say that our supplies down here we can use this king, or we can use any of these at any time to be the next card. Because then if I put the king, I know I've got a much better chance of the next card being a lower card. So let's say this is a lower card. Perfect. Let's say this is higher card. Same, so that's the base camp. So now we've got all of those saved. Okay, let's say, let's take one to start, I guess. Let's say lower. Let's say lower. Let's say lower. Oops. Okay, so these ones, obviously, I think that means now that we go back to the base camp. And this space is all. This is like we'll have to climb these again. What about if we say we can refill our supplies from it? So let's take the king to use later. And there we have it. Like we have a game that we're kind of we're playing, and there's a story attached to it. It might not be a good game, but it's it's something. So you see like, as soon as we start thinking about these rules, there are other things happening as well. So we can think about why are these characters here? What's going on? Um, what's happening to them? And why is that an interesting thing? And how do we make it exciting? So that can be like with their climbing game, having the supplies side of it that gave us our players some agency rather than just drawing random cards, it puts the player in a position where they can start to make some decisions and kind of interact with the randomness that's happening. So this week's exercise is to create a simple game that you can, you can play just with some cards, just on paper, uh, or just with some dice. 
I'm going to put some links on the end of some more examples of other ones to look at. <clears throat> if you're struggling with um, coming up with a completely new thing, another thing you could do is take an existing game and kind of modify the rules, change something about it. So like we were talking about Uno, uh, we could come up with some new rules for that. Or you could come up with a story as to kind of what like add some story around the system. What does it mean? And so we'll we'll build on these, thinking about these systems. We're going to build on it in the next few weeks, and kind of when we look back at the Bitsy games, and it should give you some more things to work with and play around with. And so hopefully that's been useful, and you've seen some examples. Um, again, I'm going to put some links at the end, so have a look at them. And good luck. Um, as always, if you're making stuff as well, send it in to us. There's a form attached to this page. So kind of yeah, send what you've been working on and if possible we'll feature it in next week's video. Um, and we can kind of talk about what works and how good they are.